Is autism an evolutionary advantage or a disadvantage? The answer is yes, sort of, but not really. If we want a better answer, we're going to have to ask a better question. Hi everyone, Paul Mikalev here from Asperger's From the Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So maybe you've heard the theory that autistic people are some kind of next step in human evolution. A step away from our more basic instincts of emotional herd-like reactions and towards a kind of hyper-intelligent, hyper-logical state. Something potentially akin to Mr. Spock from Star Trek. Leaving messy emotions behind towards a cleaner, high-tech, peaceful, futuristic world where we've solved all of our problems. Now, this idea might be a little bit attractive at first. It sounds really nice, especially to those of us who are highly intelligent and possibly not so good at all that social and emotional stuff. But that is absolutely not how evolution works, and the whole thing is complete nonsense. So is autism an evolutionary advantage? Kind of, actually, yes, but not in the way that we typically think about it. We typically think about evolution as slowly stepping towards better and better states, where the, the next state is better and more complex than the previous state. But that's an overly simplistic view of reality. We first need to ask ourselves, what is autism exactly? What are we actually talking about? And for the purposes of this video, it's suffice to characterize autism as extreme neurodiversity. Your brain is wired differently enough to make it extremely difficult to relate to your peers. Now, neurodiversity, just like biodiversity, is an integral part of the system that we might broadly call evolution. It's a quality of a group, not a quality of a person. You can't be different other than being different from something else. There has to be a baseline that we consider normal before we can consider deviations from that. So one way to consider evolution is a periodic updating of what we consider to be normal. Any change or mutation or adaption is different at first, but then if it becomes more and more popular, more and more common, it becomes eventually the new normal. It's worth noting here that difference is usually bad. I mean, when your cells are growing and copying each other, you're going to hope that they do a fairly good job of not going off script, right? You're going to hope that they follow their instructions precisely and you don't get too many abnormal mutations. I mean, we know this from instinct. If your child was born with three eyes or a monkey's tail or something like that, probably your first thought wouldn't be, wow, this is amazing, what a cool advantage. The first thought is, uh-oh, something must be wrong, not because we know that it's bad, it might actually be an, a significant improvement, but because we haven't seen it before, it's something different, and instinctively, everything different is new and unknown and scary. Precisely because in the game of survival, most new ideas, most changes, most mutations and adaptions are not an improvement on the previous ones. Again, this makes sense. I mean, if evolution is a random mutation or a random adaption, what are the chances that you're gonna just re-scramble my DNA and end up with something that is better at surviving than what we've already come up with? But here's the catch. If the chances of some random mutation actually being an improvement are very, very, very infinitesimally low, they still exist and it still might happen. Even if it's only one in a million or one in a million billion chance, there is still a chance that some kind of change that is different and not expected might turn out to be an improvement over the previous one. So ironically, while it's not an advantage usually to be different, it is an advantage in general in a population to have difference and to experiment with difference and to incorporate difference as much as possible so that when situations change, when we need to adapt, when we need new ideas, when we need to change our culture, when we need to go forth and do something different and survive in a different way than we have previously, we have the difference 
built into our DNA, for example, or built into our biology or built into our neurology or within our population, that we can actually do that. And that's part of the way, I mean, I don't claim to have given you a particularly thorough explanation of how evolution works, but that's part of the reason that neurodiversity is an advantage for the entire human race regardless of the fact that if having autism is an advantage for me or another individual or not. So with that in mind, you might say that autism is a source of improvement for the entire human race. Maybe remember that next time you're feeling a bit down on yourself. So again, is autism an evolutionary advantage? Well, for an individual, no, not really, not as such, because most of the time a difference does not help you to do better in general. In fact, it's actually an autistic trait that you tend to be better at one thing at the exclusion of a lot of other things. So when we're talking about survival and evolution as a species, it doesn't really make sense for everyone to have a highly specialized skill set, especially not if that comes at the cost of social skills and the ability to relate with one's peers. That said, having a small percentage of the population, say, I don't know, 1%, 5%, something like that, would be incredibly beneficial because it's that one genius that is going to change the world for everyone else. It's that one person who puts their hand up and says, are you sure we want to do this? This doesn't quite feel right. I'm happy to go against the crowd and suggest something that maybe no one else is going to feel quite as comfortable sticking their neck out to suggest. And this also goes some of the way to explain why autism is classified as a disability. I have many autistic friends that would openly classify themselves as disabled. I mean, let's not sugarcoat this. There's often a lot of additional challenges and barriers. Do they also have valuable skills for society? Yes, of course they do. And in that sense, their autism is both an advantage and a disadvantage. But what it is most definitely not is the next stage of human evolution, which will become the new normal in the future. In fact, it is most likely that autism and this type of neurodiversity in general has been a part of the human race, an essential part of the human race ever since the beginning. Anyway, I should probably leave it there. I hope this has made some sense. Let us know in the comments if you personally feel like autism is an advantage to you or a disadvantage or maybe both. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.